Good morning. Welcome back. Late pod this week. Very busy. Yankees are delayed. Mommy Nate is changing things for us, but we're going to make this one pretty quick. We're going to cover macro elements of the league and the FS show. We're also going to talk a little bit about some trades, a little bit about some free agency pickups, and then a who's going to win it this week, closing with Pat's top bet. For all of us to be so rich, we won't even care about this league anymore. Pat, how are you this morning? I'm doing great. Um, you know, disappointing last night for the Yanks. Uh, yeah. Disappointing last 48 hours for the Yankees. But hey, yeah. there's always, t- you know, we're playing again today. We got Cole toe in the slab. That's right. In Cleveland. Either way. In gross Cleveland. Podcast. Yeah, it's football or, podcast. Uh, we had an absolutely electric Thursday night game. A lot of, lot of big, uh, big points scored there. And then obviously yeah. a great slate of Sunday games. So, uh Let's just jump into it, man. It's an absolute embarrassment on Thursday night for everybody so uh, in terms of what we had to watch, but not for me because of Bullet Brian. But let's get into some of the things that happened this past week transactionally, injury-wise, our first slate of buys, which were affecting some teams more than others, and some nuance with guys like a Cam Akers, what's happening with him, what's happening with a T. Higgins. There's people in and out of the lineup so early that we're going to have to talk about it. But let's yeah. get into that big blockbuster. Uh, you know, me – and Derek shaking up things, right? He's at the top of the league. I'm at the bottom. I would argue that he's a struggling franchise from a talent perspective, and my team, Sleeping Giant. We talked about this. World War II stuff, Pearl Harbor-style stuff. So what's your take? My take, you know, I don't want to... uh... I don't want to offend Derek. He seems like he's in a pretty fragile state right now. He's sending, uh, sending some real, real aggressive uh, messages. So I'll just say this. You can say that again. Yeah, his backfield is uh, is in trouble, and I think he got a guy. I, I kind of knew you were looking to move Taylor. I figured you would be. Um, and mm. you're trading an upside, right? I mean, he's not healthy. That's a bummer. Um, but the offense, to me, is like still the offense, right? Like he he's super talented, but under Matt Ryan, it just looks very different than it did last year. It's looked um, different. Don't besmirch Wentz. Don't forget how important Wentz is. Sometimes Wentz could hand that ball off. But I, I'll say, I think Higgins, you know, Higgins is fucking good. He's a little bit banged up, and then mm-hmm. Mostert, dude, like Mostert. He's the RB1 in Miami, and we know what Raheem can do under under that scheme, under that zone right. scheme from what he did in uh, the San Fran days. So I think for you, you got um, – I love T. Higgins. I think that um, teams have basically come in and just tried to stop fucking Jamar at all costs, and, and T's had a nice um, – you know, when he's healthy. And then you have a good running back in Monster. Did you keep Bobby Trees? No, I chose to pick up uh, James Cook who I want to see in the kitchen maybe week eight going forward. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. so I, I think, like I said. Derek uh, did get Isaiah McKenzie. Yeah, so which is nice on, for him. That's Three like different a teams. Owner. He Look, Derek is a negotiating master. I mean, he works in Hollywood. This is a cutthroat industry. And, I mean, he demanded that Isaiah be in there. Now, I think he's one concussion away from being out for the season. That's the risk he takes. But let's quickly move on because I think what I'm hearing is Derek lost the trade 100%. 110% was in my favor. So, you know, there's a bit of a trade we had last week where James Conner switched hands, DeAndre Swift, another entering the season just like JT, top five running back off the board, big time player. So far for Josh, he's gotten, I think, a cumulative eight points from mm-hmm. Curtis Samuel and yeah. uh, six points, and now an out for James Conner. Now, granted, Swift hasn't played, but what's your take there two weeks in? I would say uh, it's a good move by Dan. I think De- Josh's back was against the wall a little bit. He had uh, He got into a hole you know, win-loss-wise, and he knew Swift was going to be out. And it was a great sell-high candidate for Curtis Samuel. I think he had a really big game, and then you're kind of relying on Carson Wentz to have Terry McLaurin. Uh, the dude, what's his name, from UNC, he's had a couple big plays. Uh, Jahan Dotson, and now Curtis Samuel. It's like, you know, you're kind of saying, all right, you know, great week, sell-high. Uh, Connor, you know, I, I think it was, to me, more of a Connor for, for Swift um, <clears throat> trade and Josh may be forced to start Samuel. So good move by Dan. I think um when healthy obviously we know what Swift is, but but he uh you know if Dan can can float a five hundred record until mm-hmm. Swift comes back, he's gonna be pretty dangerous heading into the back half of the year. Well beyond that, I mean let's talk about this week buys guys who are out of the lineup as we were talking about. I don't think there's first, a team first more one of the year. The first bye week's always pretty crafty because um it's early. Yeah, it's, it's a bummer. Yeah it's, but it's good it is good in, in the case of the Raiders. So I'm going to just jump in there because, wow. uh, once again, Dan, 
He needs that Darren Waller guy back. And Darren's been banged up. I think he was listed as like questionable play to snap or two on Monday night and then took himself <clears> out <throat> of the game, which is just maddening for the guys yeah. who started him. Uh, I don't think Dan did, but that's a new offense. Um, struggled early, kind of a bummer game on uh, on Monday night, although it was fun. I fell asleep early, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, with Darren getting healthy on the bye week, I think, you know, as a car investor myself, I think it'll be nice to see uh, offense make some tweaks, get healthy, and uh, it's kind of nice to get a bye week out of the way, right? Like Devontae Adams will be back. Hopefully yeah. he's not in jail for the rest of the season for a blatant assault on national yeah, television. It's, it's very sad. I mean, it's a, it's a Derek team behavior, but um, we'll, you know, we'll, 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 we'll it, Tell me it's surprising for a guy like that, you know, an owner like that, to roster that kind of, you know, complete complete disregard for the law. It doesn't surprise me. But, but look, you know who else this affects even more than maybe you or in a positive light, the Raiders owners – Governors, excuse me, is a team like a Perva, right? You've got Derrick Henry on by so early. You've got Amon Ra St. Brown, probably another week past his injury, on by. Yeah. Hawkinson's on by. Cam Akers is at an impasse with being a professional. Right? Yeah, that's a weird one. In Los so what's Angeles, going on in L.A.? I don't know. I'm not sure, but, I mean, if you're L.A., trade for anybody, right? Like Bill Barnwell would write, hey, Saquon Barkley is available for any third string. Yeah, yeah, just go market. trade trade the best player out of four. We'll get one. Saquon if you need him, I guess. What a fucking idiot. Jesus. Um, yeah, that's that's tricky. It's like that's... let's. I mean, the the rebuilding Giants. I believe they're four and one. For all the Giants fans out there, yeah, exactly. what a great the season moment. they're having. But hey, by the way, just um, in terms of Cam Akers news, mm -hmm. uh, the rich. <sighs> seem to get richer because this Rob Gotti guy, we're hearing Ooh. news of, of McCaffrey getting moved to a great offense, and then obviously he's got Henderson waiting in the wings for, um, you know, now that Cam Akers is out, Henderson's the clear number one, and Sean McVay knows knows how to knows how to supply an RB1 with touch. Henderson was very good last year. I mean, I know they have, like, some rookie who's been out for, like, multiple months, but, like, Henderson was the number one last year, basically, for the Henderson's whole year. Great. Yeah. Or he was, like, he was, like, an RB2 last year for the whole year, so... And, and yeah, so the rich are getting richer for Rob. He's benefiting from that Cam Akers trade. I will say, got... though, I mean, Rob has to start Devin Duvernay. And I'm just saying. Rob... Rob... Duvernay's awesome. Is he? It, I, I'm a Duvernay. I, I put a bid in on him. I, I thought he would kind of float under the radar. I like that he spent money no, on him. I, no, I would have no. started Duvernay over Lazard. Well. Before we move on, speaking of spending money, I mean, we did have a lot of mm. free agent activity this past week. We saw a lot of people doing things. I mean, look at a perfect. He's starting. Rondale and Wandale. You rarely see it in one it's lineup. A Dale on Dale. It's a Dale on Dale. Uh... A double Dale lineup dosage for your boy Desai. And I mean, that's nice to see. But Ted, um, against all odds, and I think a surprise to the league and, and, and people who know him really best. Uh, 38, I believe it was, for Jacoby Myers. And I'll tell you what. Mm. That Bailey Zappi got, you know, it's surprise, surprise. Bailey Zappi gets his first start, surprise, and then surprise. immediately his wide receiver one goes for top dollar. I mean, look, is Zappi the single greatest quarterback we've seen in this league in a long time? I don't know. I, I don't have that answer. I just know one week in, his wide receiver one goes for top dollar. So I'm just saying, maybe there's a correlation between 62 collegiate touchdowns and, maybe. Uh, and number one production. I mean, but hey, if I may, no cappy. I'm into Bailey Zappi. That's right, for all, for, all, for, all, for all you young kids. But, I mean, like, Jacoby Myers isn't even drawing the start. And we saw some other guys go for high-dollar figures. I just don't – I want to – you know, if it's, it's the morning. We're having some iced coffees. If this was later, we'd pour one out for Mac Collins and the roster of wide receiver sixes that Dima picks up each week for 7 to $10. And I hate to see him hit the, hit the waivers without ever tasting glory in an active roster. Probably someone was cleaning the garage and he forgot, yeah, he forgot to put to him in there. Lineup. But who can be sure? Yeah, I um I think it's interesting right now. Um, the, the the team decide team D McGamarnick matchup is is a big one because it's three and three and and this isn't a matchup preview. But right now uh, he's got a starting spot empty at Perva. So maybe yeah. he's taking a page out of Dima's book. But I, I could see him, obviously, kind of, he's, I guess, forced. Well, maybe not. He's got Algier, but definitely a... He has Algier, but I'm excited to see who pays the most for Deion Jackson. If I'm if I'm Derek, I'm not thrilled about starting James Robinson, seeing Etienne just kind of, like, get the touches. Mm -hmm. Jags struggle a bit. They're going up against Indianapolis, so they should have the ball more because Indy sucks. They don't have Jonathan Taylor. But... Dion. That's, That's a best bet this week on Pat's bet, so we'll, we'll go there okay, later. Okay, we're going to return to that. And I guess 
some of the last things I'll say about pickups and mm. tomfoolery on the waiver wire is we saw heading into week six a Deshaun Watson pickup. And did we really? Did that I didn't catch that. Who where's Deshi? I know Greg loves that name. Deshi, Deshi is on Schwartz's team. Oh, yeah, that yeah, makes sense. Schwartz dropped uh Tua, who honestly He's probably going to be back, what, next week? Then next week, yeah. Marty next picked him up. I know Marty got Tua. Um, I didn't realize yeah. Dan. Dan's really planning for, for what is Thanksgiving, I think. is what Planning to be really good towards the end of the year. I mean, he's going to have to hold on him. He's already trying to sell 1.2 projected Latavius Murray for, for anybody who will listen. So, hmm. look, I think uh, Schwartz is coming off of a high. He's putting up 130 last week. He picks up Deshaun Watson. He looks to have fleeced Josh in the trade, but, I mean – if I know if I know Dan, his team's ready to put up sixty eight this week. Yeah, he, he, he got that on his resume. But as as a fellow guy who's put up a stinker or two this season, um, uh, I'll say Dan right now is is in a good spot, man. He's gonna you know he, uh, assuming the projections hold, and and you know I'm not a big projections guy, but you know you you like his 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 matchup against Josh this week for him to go. Um, Oh, actually, excuse me. Josh is projected to beat him, but either way, he beats Josh this week. He goes to four and two, and then he's got a few guys on by coming off next week. And I don't know. Dan, Dan, Dan's a team I'm buying. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 you know, contender, pretender. He's a contender. Okay. okay. I think he's, uh, he's a team to watch out for. I'm going to say that he's a pretender, but you know who else I think is pretending to care? It's it's Marty by starting Taysom Hill after the week he just had. I don't think he has a choice, dude. I played Marty last week, and I was so thankful. That I'm just watching, like every time Red Zone cut to the the, um, the Saints game, I was like, "Oh, cool! Maybe anyone other than Taysom Hill made up like special teams. Like he threw a touchdown. It was it was like I was like a fifty point. It was a, a close to a fifty point day, and I was like, you you cannot bench a guy like this. Like yeah. he's forced to do it after last week. So I um, I would do the same. And plus, he's got fucking dude. I know we're 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 here." We're talking about fantasy matchups, but the reality of oh 37. But the reality is we have the motherfucking Bills versus the Chiefs at 4:30 today, and Marty has Mahomes. Bakker, who I'm playing, has Josh yeah. Allen. I, I think we got the Tennessee Bama game yesterday, which was an absolute 10 out of 10, and we're gonna see we're gonna see the Bills and the Chiefs today, and I'm just I'm beaming with excitement. You know, it is gonna be an exciting one. I'm gonna be at the Newark Airport for that. I'm flying to Las Vegas today because. Mm. You know, I'm the type of owner, I'm going out in person to address on David Carr on, on a bye week to say, look, we know we let you go. We know we let you go. And that was probably not expected. We've got Goff and Gino. Those guys are waiver guys coming into the season. Here you are hitting the waivers. I wanted to let him know in person. That's the respect I have for him. And I'm glad he's on, a, I'm gl I'm glad he's on your roster. Well, give him so my be best because he's my starter every week after this one. <laughs> give him my best. Before we get to matchups, and matchups are going to be pretty rapid fire, uh, I think when we talk about our league and how good it is. Who were who were who were probably the top pickups coming into the week? I think for running back, it was Kenneth Walker and Eno Benjamin. Those guys are already owned. At quarterback, it's Geno Smith. He's already owned. He's already owned. Yeah. At wide receiver, it's whoever was the top man. I guess it was Jacoby Myers and Ted got him. But and Duvernay. And Duvernay. But I mean, you picking up Ken Walker is sensational timing. Season saving, one might say. We we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> as as Dennis Green is saying, like we wanted to crown their asses. Let's crown them then. He seems a little crowned at this point. People are like, lock him in. Real RB one. Kenneth Walker. Yeah. People are very high, high on he's, Kenneth Walker. I'm drinking that Kool Aid myself, but he's. And he's how could you not? Great. How could you not? I mean, you know, he's he's one of many freshman RBs. We saw Brian Robinson look like a really, really poor man's Derrick Henry. In, on, on Thursday night, you've got Rashad White maybe doing things across your matchup for, for Bakker's team. We'll see. You know? And? I'm not sure. Well, Bakker still has no, to start. And in, right? you're missing another freshman RB who might win Offensive Player of the Year. Oh, Bruce Hall? Bruce. Bruce. That was a fun Ooh. one. I, um, this Green Bay game has me nervous. I have a feeling... Uh, well, I, anyway. I, I, All right. Well, why don't we start with the matchups? And let's start with you versus Bakker because I think these are two teams, palindromic, three and two Bakker, two and three for you. I would argue that your team is a bit on the rise. The Kenneth Walker news is the talk of the town that no one's talking yeah. about because he was already on your roster. And for Bakker's team, coming off of a week where he put up 120 with 44 
from Josh Allen. I know. So uh, I'll say this. Um, walk me through it. In terms of this matchup, I got to tell you, man, I think my team is pretty fucking good outside of the quarterback. Like, I think Mixon's serviceable. Walker, I love. I believe, candidly, I have the four best receivers in the league between, uh, you know, but I, I would challenge you to find a team, you know, Lockett, Kelsey, and uh, Jefferson are all top 10 pass catchers in well, terms of in wide receiver ranking. Evans, DKT, I'll, I'll see you outside. I got four. I'll see you outside. And then, and then we have Lazard here. And then, um, so anyway, I, I like what my team's doing. I think, I think we've, we've navigated a more competitive roster uh, than, we, than we started the season sure. with for sure. But the motherfucking thing that will kill me this week, and it's killed me the last three weeks, it's unfathomable. Can be play. My quarterbacks have not thrown a touchdown in three weeks. In three. Yeah. Stafford's wedding. I, I, Stafford didn't throw one. Then fucking I started um, Stafford. Stafford's wedding was just after. That was, that was your first Lawrence start after benching him and being like vindicated. Third. And, and now today I think I'm going with um, with Stafford against the Brown, uh, the the Panthers because the Panthers, not only did they fire Matt Rule, but they fired their defensive coordinator. And Look. Um, that South Carolina first round pick, Horn, he's not playing either. So – um, if I'm gonna if, if I'm gonna call this, I'm looking at your team. You're in the losers bracket. You're rostering three quarterbacks, and you know you, you're gonna have to play a bad one. You've got Josh Allen projected scared for 31 death. points. Scared to death of this Josh Allen game. Again, yeah, no, I, I, I I'm gonna get. Let's look. Let's just cut to the chase. Box Jamal Chase Josh with Allen. potentially no T. Uh, could be good. Could be bad. He's going back to New Orleans. Back to where uh, he won that natty. <sighs> He's gonna show up. He's going to show uh, out. You know, I'm, I'm expecting a big Jamar Chase day. I'm expecting a really big fucking Josh Allen day. And Jeff Wilson have a nice day. Divisional Goddard. I mean, I just think that uh, I just think the Bakers team takes this. But look, like you said, it's, it's uh, a uh, it's it's a big week for Kenneth Walker uh, to show us that he is and should I, I just, be a top twelve. The, the only the only chance I have this week is if my fucking quarterback throws. Or, you know, I get twenty. At least, which is like you would think a started a startable fantasy quarterback would get twenty, but I think Josh Allen and Jamar Chase are going to probably wind up the weeks at the top in their position. So, cool. shout out to Bacher. Uh, shout out to Bacher, man. Congrats on the win. Well, let's move on to um, you know, Rob versus Ted. It's the oh. one and two matchup. It's an absolute barn burner blockbuster that's being made up for us. I mean, our, I our very own cool. Chiefs versus Bills. And I, this, is, um, this is the type of game you're gonna you're gonna. Absolutely, you're going to tell the guys at ad sales we're moving Step Brothers off. Okay, exactly. we're moving it. We're, we're moving a game over here. It doesn't matter if you're trying to watch the feral hits. Okay, right. Goss is new. Off. I, I um, you know, I, I think just going through it. I mean, Lamar against the Giants again, and then you have Kyler against <coughs> Seattle. Both te- both quarterbacks on the road. Seattle's a tricky yeah. place to play, but I feel they've I been getting like lit up. <laughs> Every defense for Seattle. I mean, they're, I like this matchup. It's, it's two high-performing RBs. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Rob's team because Christian's looked great. Brees has looked fantastic. There's a reason to project it for 17.9 and 14. But, I mean, Etienne, if they really let him, you know, make the gumbo going forward in uh, in in Yaxtonville, then look, man, him and Ramondre with no Damian Harris, very exciting next to Lamar yeah. Jackson. I, I think this is probably a preview. You know, this is the two best teams in the league. I think this is probably I mean, you were talking up your receivers, but we're looking at Cooper Cup, Mark Andrews, and A.J. Brown together. I, I think, look, I, I, I would say, you know, he's he's close. Uh, he doesn't have four. Um, but, you know, Cup over Jefferson, sure. Uh, I would put Kelsey over Andrews, and then A.J. Brown versus Tyler Lockett's kind of a toss-up. And then uh, Lazard over De- Devontae. Here's my thought. I think Ted clearly has either, you know, either me or Ted have the best receiving core in the league. And he's I, got Lamar Jackson, who's an MVP candidate. I think that no team in the league has three top 15 wide receivers quite like mine does. But we'll, we'll get to that later. I'm going to give this to Ted because I just think okay. that Ted's team is too set up here. Divisional Dallas versus Eagles. I think they're going to go nuts. He's starting both guys. Um, I, I do have concerns about... Daryl Henderson. Um, I have concerns about Duvernay. Duvernay has not had. I mean, if he hadn't caught any touchdowns, he is like irrelevant. In Week One, he had his best week because he had two touchdowns on okay. four catches. So, I just believe in Ted's team this week. I think it's going to balance things a bit. Now, Rob has been an absolute magician, a warlock when it comes to opposition, uh, oppositional uh, voodoo. Let's say, and we'll see what happens if one of these guys on Ted's team goes down with like a list Frank. Or he just retires like Calvin Ridley. One of them is betting. I'm not sure. 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do about that one. Uh, I'm gonna give it to Ted though. Personally, okay. what about you? Um, you know what? Let's go, Gotti. He hasn't Ooh. lost yet. Why not? You know, I, I believe um, the historian comes out and me. The only other team to go five and zero in the history of the Freak Show was the 2009 Pat Dennehy team, and we got wow. cocky and we lost. And uh, I remember I was living at home. That was that was when I all I had going for me was fantasy football and a job at Joe Canals. So uh, wow, Josie yeah. Anals. Can, well, can Gotti go six and zero and dethrone the 09 Pat Dennehy team? I'm gonna say yes. Go Gotti. That's possible. A little factoid for you guys. I once went 0-5 and made the playoffs that year as a sixth seed. Check it out. That's perseverance for y'all asses. But let's move on to uh, Marty versus Derek. And, I mean, this is, I think, one of the team with a back-to-back 50 or at least kind of a nearly back-to-back 50 for Marty. Did he get back-to-back 50s? I think he did. Marty has been performing. Yeah, he has. He has. He has been performing. Granted, he loses his best player in Josh Jacobs to a bye. And Keenan Allen is still hurt. But he's going up against a Derek team. Devontae's on by. He's traded T and Mostert. Taylor's hurt. He's got no one else on the bench. Naheem Hines is kind of has his brain scrambled, but he might be healthy. So we're looking at a, we're looking at two backup running backs. And then just kind of like, you know, you're not feeling probably super great about McKenzie, Deontay Johnson with Pickens. Uh, or Pickett, whatever his name is, Kirk Dobbs. I mean, Derek's team right now, I think it's, it's not the week for Derek to be his most confident based on what's happening. And he's going up against a team that's been on fire with Patrick Mahomes going up against the Bills. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I look, I don't want to I don't want to feel the wrath of sad boy Derek on the thread. So we're just going to say, Derek, yeah. you're doing great, buddy. We know, you know, this is very important to you. You're going to win this. You're doing great. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if Marty uh, – Takes home the 50 this week. Uh, his team is cooking with gas, and Patrick's playing MVP ball. Yeah. And he's, he's – oh, dude, I'm so excited for this game. But, yeah, no, Derek, you're, you're going to do great. Yeah, Derek's going to have a really fun, I think, rewarding week um, playing fantasy. I think a lot of his guys are going to turn in performances that will delight him. And in the end, uh, Morty will win because his team is better. better. Um, <laughs> let's talk about Josh versus Schwartz. I mean, this is an early season um, matchup of two guys. Both of the Jewish faith, Match both, two guys. Yeah. both who made a trade last week and are now reaping what they sow against each other and looking across the matchup, across the fantasy cast and trying to understand, was that the right move? And so far, yeah, I mean, 1.6 from Curtis Samuels already logged for Josh's team, as is seven from Bearsty. We'd all take that from a defense seven. Mm-hmm. That's great. Right, it's great. But right now, um, what do you think about where – you know, Josh is at. I mean, honestly, his projections are very high. Everyone yeah, I, thinks he's going to win. Yeah, I think you know. You look at the uh, the Miami Vikings game. You got Dalvin on one side, and then you got the Cousins to Thielen connection on the other. Um, I think that'll be pretty directional for for who takes this one. If if Dalvin's able to do it on the ground, it, it's deflating for Jazz. But uh, Rogers has to go against that that stout New York secondary. So I yeah. would I would taper my my expectations, and then. You know, I talked about it on the thread. The the public is all in on the Bengals, um, minus three at New Orleans, and I think um, look for Kamara to have a nice game. I think I think this is maybe the Alvin Kamara show today, where he does it through the air on the ground. And uh, yeah, I, I I would say um, you know if New Orleans is going to win, I don't think it's going to be because Taysom Hill puts up another thirty seven. I think it's because their best player has a nice day. So I'm going to give this one. I said, I'm going to give it to Dan. I'm, I'm drinking the Dan Schwartz Kool-Aid. Um, yeah, so I, I'll give it to Dan. But I, I think this may be one of the more, uh, you know, this will be the closest matchup of the week. I think we're looking at like a buck 18 to a buck 15. I'm actually going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go in a different direction. I think that, I think that Josh is going to take this. He still okay. has Nick Chubb. This is a make or break week for Debo Samuel. He has not had above 11 points except for week four when he had 19 and last week he had two catches on nine targets. So I look, I, I, I like, can make it happen. I, think I, that like, it, I like the Atlanta matchup, but um, you know, the Browns got to go into new England and Bill Belichick. He's pretty good at coming up with a game plan. And I would say Bill's going to set, put eight in the box and say, Hey, Jacoby yep. Brissett, the guy I drafted in the fifth round, go beat me, go beat me up because you, yeah. So I think Eno Benjamin say, also is, you know, getting a lot of a lot of love from the people. I mean, they're growing up against Seattle. Seattle has been 
gashed by RB yeah, this whole that's season. A, that's a sneaky great start for Josh. You know what? Like I said, this is this is a good one. Um, this is a good one. And now look, Amari Cooper uh, on the other side of it. So yeah, this will be a good one. Um, I'm going to give it to Dan again, like I said, but I, I think this is close. And uh, you know, bet Josh to cover, but Dan money line. All eyes are on Cortland Sutton Monday night. 13.9 projection. Late game. So we'll see. At the end of today, can put it together, yeah. Can they put it together? All right. Well, let's talk about, um, you know, Aperva versus Dima, um, two doctors in their own professions. You know, in in their own right. You know, okay. one's a doctor, <laughs> and one, one is just not a doctor. And one's and one's Dima, who I would say in his profession we, we like to call him the physician mm. for how surgical he is with mm. whatever it is that he does. Let's talk about. These teams. I mean, we already we already kind of covered a perv a little bit. The Wandale Rondale start stack, and then only one running back, and then that one running back being Melvin Gordon, yes. um, and then Jerry's also, duty being your other guy. It's I'm gonna I'm not even gonna talk further. I'm gonna give it to I'm gonna give it to Dima. Yeah, I I, Dima. I think it'll be fun because they've got both um, Bills receivers playing. Last year, Gabe Davis had like a four touchdown game at Kansas City, and Stephon Diggs has been uh, you know the more consistent. But last week. Gabe absolutely went off. Um, and, you yeah. know, Joey Joey B's back in the bayou uh, at New Orleans. This yeah, he is. And, uh, I don't know. And then, and then we got Herbert Monday night. So I, I think this will be a fun one. Um, you went Dima? Yeah, I, guess I went Dima just because I think that Burrow in New Orleans, I think C.D. Lamb divisional matchup. Is this Dak's first game back? No, they're going with Rush. I, I, shit, I sure. don't know. We'll I find mean, out later tonight. Also, DJ Moore with no uh, with no Baker. Sneaky. Um, Walker. PJ Walker is kind of sneaky awesome. I think he was an XFL star. Um, yeah. And then he's got Pickens. Who, by the way, Pickens and, and Pickett, the the pick boy, he's done, yeah, he's done with the last you. two weeks. So, you know what? Sorry, Perva. Let's go Dima as well. It, it's just that he needs Herbert to be insane and Stefan Diggs to give him the absolute ceiling because Judy is – Judy's just not that good. Look, statistically, I am it's up. been a bit of a bummer. I know Keenan Allen's um, yeah. been big nicked up the last few weeks, but, I yeah. mean, he came out with two twenty nines, and the last week has been pretty pedestrian. For sure. For a guy I, I thought for would sure. be, you know, going toe-to-toe with Mahomes and Allen for, uh, you know, top of the fantasy. I mean, at, at the very least, at press time, while we're recording this, there's no there's no running back starting for a yeah. perfect team. So look, I don't know if it's a garage cleaning situation, you're you're in distress. Um, but if that doesn't change, I mean this is a open and shut case for Dima's team. Um Hundo P. Dima's not gonna expect one point from Young Huey or zero. He had eighteen four, twelve, twelve in this past week he had zero points. Young really? Huey. Yeah no, that's a, this is a bounce back for uh for the best number seven in Atlanta Falcons history. Big time bounce back. And then let's let's end on on way on top. Excessively on top. So it's the two worst teams in the league so far. Uh, myself mm. and uh and Greg. Greg's mm. own five of the one in four teams I've scored the least, so you know I'm the worst. Um I love my team though. I'll I'll, I'll tell everyone who will listen, I'll tell strangers at the store. I've I've called my mayor. I've told him. I love my team. I love these guys and no different this week. I would love it though if during warmups they're like T Higgins is actually like he looks great and uh he has to play today. His ankle is fine. That'd be great. I'd start him. Um but yeah, man, I love the team. I love the team. I love the Mostert start. I love the Brian Robinson shitty performance for 12. I love it. I'm a little concerned about Saquon Barkley at all times and Pittman having a bounce back and Ayuk being useful, but I think I have this one personally. I um I'm just looking statistically here. DK Metcalf, I thought, had a lot more – I guess he's just super consistent. I thought he had at least a 30-burger under his belt. But, um, yeah, I think Higby, Higby – I'm kind of hoping Higby has a nice game for Stafford purposes. Um, Higby's pretty good. Um, but I got to tell you, Greg, the only guy with three banners, feels a little snake bitten this year. Yeah, um, he has the number one running back. Like he, or I guess he's the number three. Interesting. Future um, Bill, Future Bill. I read this morning. Yeah, yeah. The, in the blockbuster, uh, Pittman's been a bit of a bummer. Terry McLaurin with six seven isn't great, but I think your nine and your twelve on Thursdays got you feeling real good heading into the weekend. Nine yeah, from feeling good. Is tremendous. I don't even get that from some running backs I roster. But let's talk about um, my choices and my history. 
last two weeks I've started. Yeah, I, was gonna, a, I, I wanted to ask you, man, because a five point be... QB, and then I started a three point QB. Um, I'm trading guys away. I'm dropping guys who are meaningful to other teams. So while I look at my roster, I'm like, ooh, hell yeah. Nice. All my guys said it and forget it. Except Derek was like, I would never, ever start Higby under any circumstances. I would never do it. And I'm like, you know, Derek, your team's not good enough to make those proclamations. But he's, Derek's the best, dude. Stop. He doesn't deserve it. He's, he's the reigning best. champion. He doesn't deserve it. He's the reigning champ. But respect on his name. Derek. Uh, so Delamore. I would say, because I, I was watching last week's podcast um, yeah, sure. in the Uber on the way to Yankees. Yeah, State, yeah, yeah. Just to do a little self-scouting. And you were so confidently starting Derek Carr. What yeah. changed between their Derek Carr start and the Jared Goff start on Sunday morning? Um, I just felt that, like, okay, Goff's getting Amon Ra back. I was a little worried about the New England game plan of running with Bailey Zappi. But then I was like, you know what? Bailey Zappi is going to throw. Sure and Goff looked incredible. And he's got all of his weapons theoretically except for Swift. This should be an open and shut case. He's looked very good. Carr, while I think he's good um, – is like a, a lower ceiling to me than golf. And I, and I needed some juice and I picked fucking super wrong for the 14th time this season. Um, so, yeah. I, you know, um, so I was just watching the podcast and you had, you were very, con you were decisive, you were concise and I don't yeah. know, seems like. We'll see what happens today. Maybe I'll start Garrett Wilson instead of uh, Mike Evans against Pittsburgh. He'll be like, look, I love, the, I love the makeup of this kid. This kid's got the right, the right head on his shoulders. Uh, you know, amazing upbringing, all that stuff. Anyway. It's like uh, it's funny. I feel like your your roster decisions are like me when I watch college game day, like on Saturday mornings. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to gamble this week. I have my set games. I'm going to take three Sunday NFL games, and then by like ten minutes before the noon kickoffs, I'm like, well, I'm betting on nine games. I didn't even know were happening today. Yeah, we just got to uh, we just got to settle down. We got to settle yeah, down. You just have to just know on. that your your most dangerous times. It's like, oh man, this Tulsa plus seven just makes too much sense to pass on, and it's like. What am I doing? So, That's yeah. a very good segue um, to close out the show today with, you know, what are some of the things you're looking out there today yeah. for betting purposes? Now, I saw yeah. one online, and you know me. I like to bet I like to bet small for preposterously um, high chance. I'm looking for a $95,000 return for $25. And I yeah. saw I think I got a some parlay. Good Did you see this parlay? Damian Pierce, Offensive Rookie of the Year, parlayed with Sauce Gardner, Defensive Rookie of the Year, parlayed with. Saquon Barkley, comeback player of the year. A twenty-five dollar bet gets you ninety-six thousand. I think that's a pretty that's time, that's a decent bet. That is Damian Pierce, offensive, offensive rookie, rookie of the year. year. Sauce Gardner, defensive rookie of the year. He's already got. And he was already Saquon, rookie of the week, and then Pepsi Saquon and Barkley, comeback. comeback player of the year. That is a twenty-five for ninety. That's that's say like plus three hundred thousand. That you made that bet? No. No. Oh. I would make that bet. That I'm familiar with the bet. I, I, I might, I might make it today. I, 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 it today. I, I think that Danny, I would say, yeah, that's a great bet. Um, Daddy needs right. a new Yukon XL. Da but yeah, Daddy needs a lot. Daddy's got to pay. That Daddy would be half of Kristen's yeah. student loans if we hit that bet. So that would be huge. Yeah. All right, but so walk, look, walk me through what you see today. I'm going to give you my my some of my favorites, and um, yeah, this may be this may be. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. A bloodbath, or it could be could be mm -hmm. lucrative. So, number one, I, I alluded to it on a thread this morning. You got to follow the sharps, and you got to fade the public. What does the public mean? The public means the amount of bets being placed. So, eighty percent of the bets being placed are on the Bengals minus three, an NFC team hosting a traveling AFC team, obviously, and the home team getting points. These teams don't prepare for each other. A uh, hostile crowd down there. Maybe Joey B still got some love from the uh, the championship days, but everyone and their mother is betting the Bengals. There's a saying, a lot of money on the other side. People don't know shit. So I would say as a contrarian play today, take the uh, the Saints plus three because 80% of the time, 80% of the money for people who don't know what the fuck they're doing, I, 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 I just, there's a lot of money to be made because, you know, the house always wins. The house wins because people don't know what the fuck they're doing. That's just expertise for you guys. That's just minus three. It's, a, it's a sucker play. My other favorite play, and it's moved down a point and a half since I checked it last, is the under in the Jacksonville Colts game. It was 42 and a half. It's moved to 41. After seeing last week, um, the Jags may be a little bit fraudulent. And uh, without Jonathan Taylor, they got Phillip Lindsay in the, in, you know, so not as much home run play. Uh, home run potential from the Colts. So um, two offensive hit coaches who know each other well. Um, sure. Mike was the head OC for the uh, the Peterson Super Bowl. 
Uh, and I think they play a little keep away. Mm. They kind of limit the turnovers, two good defenses. So I like the under 41 there. It's already come. If you can get it at 42 and a half, hell yeah. And then the other one I had for you. Um, give me one second here. Oh, duh. The big one. Hmm. Very polarizing. We got two and a half. We got Patrick Mahomes as a home underdog. You know what Patrick Mahomes is as an underdog? Preposterous. Undefeated. Wow. So you're getting the best team in football against the other best team in football. Now, what do we know about the Bills? Did the Bills lose an away game this season? They did. Have the Chiefs lost a home game this season? They have not. Not. So uh, I tend to lean... Chiefs minus uh, plus two and a half. Get it to plus three because if they win on a field goal, you push. Um, but anyway, I, I like to think that Patrick Mahomes can go punch for punch with anyone in this league. And Josh Allen's playing the best, but so is Patty. So I like I like uh, the, the Chiefs as a home underdog. I like that too. I'm going to be drinking a lot of beers at EWR on a late yeah, Sunday. Dude, what time is this flight? Can you get it? Like, catch a red eye, man. Just this is a uh, this is a, a six thirty flight. Gets me into Las Vegas at nine thirty. So yeah, bump that back. You're gonna miss the second half. This is a four twenty five, baby. This is America's game of the week. Actually, it's CBS. So it's that's a good call. Well, I'll, I'll leave everybody with this, and this is really um my bet that I'll, I'll part you guys with. What you're gonna want to do is take twenty five dollars in your preferred betting application. Select your favorite winner of every every game, so all 15 to Monday. You're going to want to parlay them. Just pick your best guys. Pick your gut. Put 20 to 25 down and walk away with 50 to 80K, depending on how many underdogs you pick. Well, how, many, how, many ga- how many teams are on by? Four? Yeah, so we've only got like 12 so games. 32 minus parlay. four, and then you got minus four for Monday and Thursday games. Exactly. So what are you looking at? 32 minus eight, what is that, 26? Mm-hmm. So you're looking at tw- so you're looking at 13 games. So a 13 legger, way better than the 16 leggers we've been throwing out there. The first it's been 15 leggers. I'm not betting on Thursday, and okay. that's kind of that's kind of what what I think is holding me back. Not being locked in. You're not aggressive enough. Week. Yeah, my my number one rule as an experienced gambler is just gamble on as many possible games as you can, yeah. as often as you can, and and the more money the better, because then you'll win the most money. Yeah, if you guys listen to this with your family and your wives, just remember, bet as much as you can, as often as you can, on as many um, bets as you can get your hands on. Precisely. Um, but look, guys, have a wonderful week. Uh, good luck to me. Bad luck to everybody else. And uh, yeah, I hope you get to listen to this before the games or during the games. Listen to it with your family. Whenever. Yeah. Peace. Right. Thanks, guys.